Okay, so recently I haven't actually updated much, um, but I'm updating everything slowly now. And this is the time for my next VMware image for Lion. Um, it's 10.7.2, everything's fixed as usual. Um, and I'm just going to go through it really quickly. Um, and you can download it via the links in the description. And just one thing I want to mention real quickly is that if the size of the file that you get isn't what I have here, don't worry about that because I'm actually remaking this in the next like couple of hours because I need to. This it's too difficult to explain, but it's just something I need to do to make the uh, size actually be compressed further um, because five gigabyte download is really not what I want to have to upload. I want to get it down to like three point five, so I'm just going to have to go through that. Um, so don't worry if you get it and it's about four gigabyte or something like that. Um, that's meant to be how it is. So just to get that one out of the way. Right, so what you'll get from your download is you'll have a 7-zip file, um, a link, um, and a link to you know our website. So basically the link to the website is just a place you can you know follow stuff, follow new updates and stuff like that. So just check that out if you have any you know kind of queries, etc. And you want to extract the 7 zip file. Um, I haven't decided yet, but if it's an exe file, you just double click it and it'll tell you where you want to extract, and you just click extract and it'll extract it. But I haven't decided which one I'm doing yet, so that's why I'm just telling you both. And if you go into the VMware image folder, um, you'll see right here we have the usual, um, so the image file at the top, hardware virtualization in the middle, and the unlocker at the bottom. And what you want to do first is you want to open the unlocker folder and depending on which VMware series you use, VMware 8 or VMware like 7, so um, Fusion 4 goes along with that as well and Fusion 3 goes along with the top one. Um, you want to pick whichever one you use. Um, so VMware 8 has been properly updated now so there is Linux as well and stuff like that. But I'm actually using 7.1.4 still because I just prefer it, I think it works better. And basically you just read the readme, so if I just open that up, you can see it tells you how to do it on each, um, on each one. Um, because I'm using Windows, I'm just going to open up command line in Windows, and I'm just going to run windows.bat, whoops, bat, and it'll run through the unlocker real quick. And what this does is allow you to run Mac in VMware because VMware actually allows it. It just has it locked and limited so that you can't access it. And this just basically unlocks it. So once it's done, um, just close that down. And you want to go back to the main folder and open up Mac OS X Lion. The hardware virtualization bypasser is actually for only people who are on 7.1.3 or 7.1.4. Unfortunately, it hasn't been updated for VMware 8 yet. Um, that should come in the next month or so. And um, for people who are using the hardware virtualization, you need to know that the only time you ever need to use that is if you try to boot up your machine and you get, um, I can't remember what it is, like Mac OS X is not supported with software virtualization, you need hardware virtualization or whatever it is. Something like that, you'll know it when you see it. That is when you run the hardware virtualization bypasser. Okay, no other time do you need to run it. And you also need to only use it if you don't have hardware virtualization in your BIOS. If you have it in your BIOS, go and enable it, it'll be fine. But if you don't, that is when you use it, okay? I'm just getting this straight because I had so many emails about people like, oh, I had this problem, and I even run you know, the hardware bypasser, and it's like, that's nothing to do with it, so you've probably just ruined something right there, so don't do that, okay? Just avoid that, please. So now you want to open up your virtual machine, so it's a VMX file, and just wait for it to open. Okay, so um, yeah, the build number will be different. It won't be two point two point whatever. It'll probably be two point three point um, zero to eleven when you get it, so that's probably the build you'll have. Um, so just ignore the build number at this point. But you can see um, basic instruction there, but I'm going to go through it anyway. And at this point, just click on Edit Virtual Machine Settings. 
and from here you can set the memory you want to give to your machine or whatever um, I'm just going to leave it at 1024 1024 is what I would say is the lowest that you should give it because anything below that will cause um, problem for the machine it'll just be ridiculously slow so 1024 at least I would say processors go ahead with you know whatever you want to do here I never actually do this I always leave it on one and just leave it as default because I just think that's easier um, but you can edit that if you want hard disk obviously leave that one attached because that's the one with Mac on it but you can add more um, space etc CD um, you can add you know images blah 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 network should work from scratch um, not from scratch it should work as it is now but if you have any problems just try with bridged or you know whatever it is that you prefer go ahead USBs just leave the same and display display is a tricky one because at the minute you want to leave it as it is okay so then if you click on the options tab you can set shared folders so for example if I wanted to share my Windows C drive um, I just click always enabled then click add and click next and if I just go for example well um, if I just wanted to share my local disk I'll just click there and press OK and call it local disk and that will be accessible within the virtual machine so if I press next and press finish you can see it's right there and everything else on that page you don't need to change unless you know what it is that you're doing already and because everything else is already configured for the best possible you know methods and stuff like that so just click on OK and then power on the machine so there isn't that much um, that you need to do from this point except make sure you press um, OK on that um, I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of things that you have to do once it's started Right, so you can see it boots up. At this point, there's no full screen. Um, and by at this point, I mean at this point of booting up. I don't mean that this image doesn't have it, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, by now, you if you needed to use hardware virtualization bypassing, you will have got the error. So if you're at this point, don't go near the hardware virtualization bypasser. Okay, so I'll just let it start up properly. Okay, so it's just about buried up. I always feel that it's good to let people see how it boots up on my screen, just so they know what's the normal, um, so how it normally works. Um, because people talk about this white screen a lot. This white screen is actually meant to be there. Um, it does, you know, happen. You just gotta give it time to actually figure out what it's doing. So just let's start up. Okay, so there we go. I'll just give it a second. Okay, so as you can see, um, it's actually before it hasn't actually been booted into on ten point ten point two before. Well, the version you'll get won't have done. I've actually I've tested it and everything, but you can see that it's you start from scratch, so you have the opportunity to sign into iCloud. Um, I'm just going to skip that for the time being, and it's not actually booted up properly yet, I'll just give it a second. I'll wait for Finder to show up. There we go. Right, so, on this part you will see, on this desktop, you'll see install after boot. So just open up that folder, and you should have three files in here. So you have Insonic Audio, VMware Tools, and SVGA. So each one has a different function. Um, and Sonic Audio is obviously sound. Um, VMware Tools is, you know, VMware Tools, you should know what that is. And SVGA changes the resolution. It allows you to change, you know, resolution on system preferences and, you know, just change it through the display menu. So instead of actually installing these right now, I'm just going to leave you guys to do that. Um, it's really self explanatory once you just open them and, you know, you can change display and everything. The only one thing that I'm just going to quickly mention is that for audio, um, once you've installed that and rebooted, 
you have to make sure that you specify your sound card in the settings. So, um, let me just quit out of that very quickly. So those things that I showed you right there are the only things that you need to do. And so to specify a sound card, you just go to Edit Virtual Machine Settings and click Add, and then Sound Card and click Next, and then Specify and just specify your speakers or whatever it is that you're using and press Finish. And that should give you fully working sound. Now, another couple of things to mention is that there's no password set. Okay, so if you want to do any kind of pseudo commands in command line, you need to set a password. And um, I think that's all there is to say, except for the um, if when well if if and when um, Mac OS X Lion 10.10.3 comes out, I would say <laughs> I usually just say go ahead and update. But unfortunately, when people did that for 10.7.2, it broke the entire thing. So I would say wait until you hear from me um, whether or not to update. You can either follow the website, which is in the description, or you can just subscribe to my channel and watch out for like you know what they call bulletins. Because as soon as like a new update will come out, I'll pretty much update to it like instantly and see what happens and see if it works and you know what needs fix what needs fixing and stuff. So that's just basically for your benefit. Um, I've got a new thing that I'm starting now, and when you update, um, it's going to basically fix the updates each time so that you can just you know update and be perfectly fine. But installing stuff like you know updating iTunes and updating um, whatever Safari and stuff like that, that's perfectly fine. It's just the you know the 10.7.3 that you have to avoid, and even then. If you want to, um, you can just take a snapshot of your machine and then update, and that way, if it does break, you can just go back to your snapshot. But if you do feel like updating before you've heard from me, um, let me know if you have any you know problems or if it works just fine because that way it saves me a bunch of trouble and I can just put out on my channel oh it works or it doesn't work kind of thing. So yeah, that's just a quick thing about updates and. Apart from that, I don't think there's anything else. Um, that's all there is to say, I think. Um, anything I've missed out, I'll just put in the description anyway. Um, so make sure you read that. And also make sure you read the links blog post, because that'll talk through the entire thing. It'll talk through you know, how to set up in case um, I've missed anything out. And it'll just basically go through everything. So that's a good thing to check out. And apart from that, remember to subscribe to my channel. Um, if you want more stuff in the future, so 10.3, not 10.3, um, 10.7.3, and all updates in future will come out as an image. Uh, there'll be videos for other stuff, you know, I don't just do Mac, as most of you know. And, yeah, um, comment if you have any problems, like the video, dislike the video. Um, although I prefer that you liked it rather than disliked it. But thanks for watching, um, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.